morning ladies and gentlemen, Birdo Warrior here. Hope you guys are having an awesome day. Well, happy Monday, happy Monday. Hope you had a super awesome weekend as well. So did you take time out to study? Did you take time out to study? Remember, we must study the word. This is a must. And we know it is late. And he states, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believed in him should not perish, but should have everlasting life. And that is John 3.16. Okay, let us go ahead and bow for prayer. The kind of gracious and Father, I thank you for this beautiful day. Right now, I ask you that you will decrease me so that you will be increased. It's my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. I hope you guys can hear that bird over there chirping. I don't think it's a bird. I think it's actually a squirrel up in the tree. Because he's been there for a while or she's been there for a while. I, I usually see the, uh, the blue jays, but I don't see those around right now. But nevertheless, let us go into scripture reading. And scripture reading is coming from Proverbs 25, verses 2 and 3. Proverbs 25, verses 2 and 3. And it reads, It is the glory of God to conceal a thing, but the honor of king is to search out a matter. The heaven for height and the earth for depth, and the earth, no, and the heart of the king is unsearchable. Let me repeat verse 3. The heavens for height and the earth for depth, and the heart of kings is unsearchable. May the Lord add a blessing and reading to the doing of his word. May the Lord add a blessing to the hearing, doing of his word. So, okay, my sister, my brother. So we're still back into our book. A sanctified life, a sanctified life, and we on um, the topic today will be a substitute, substituting feelings for reason, substituting reason, not feelings for reason. Okay, it says many who profess sanctification are entirely ignorant of the work of grace upon the heart. When proved and tested, they are found to be like the self-righteous Pharisees. They will bear no contradiction. They lay aside reason and judgment and depend wholly upon their feelings, basing their claims to sanctification upon emotions which they have at some time experienced. They are stubborn and perverse in urging their firm claims of holiness, giving many words but bearing no precious fruit as proof. These professedly sanctified people are not only deluding their own souls by their pretensions, but by applying an influence to lead astray many who earnestly desire to conform to the will of God. They may be heard to repeat again and again, God leads me. God teaches me. I am living without sin. Many who come in contact with the Spirit encounter a dark, mysterious something which they cannot comprehend. But it is that which is altogether unlike Christ, the only true pattern. Let me repeat that. But it is that which is altogether unlike Christ, the only true pattern. Let me drink some water. It's kind of cool out here today. I don't know. It's kind of cool. It's kind of cool. It's supposed to be like, I believe, like 72 today, but it's still on the cool side. It's kind of windy and all that stuff. But nevertheless, let us get into it. Get back into the lesson. It says, Bible sanctification that not, does not consist in strong emotion. What did I say? Bible sanctification does not consist in strong emotions. Here is way where many are led into error. They feel, they may feel their standard. When they feel related or happy, they claim that they are sanctified. Happy feelings or the absence of joy is no evidence that a person is or is not sanctified. There is no such thing as uh, immediate sanctification. True sanctification is a daily work 
continuing as long as life shall last. Let me repeat that. True sanctification is a daily work continuing as, as long as life shall last. Those who are battling with daily temptation, overcoming their own sinful tendency, and seeking for holiness of heart and life, make no boastful claims of holiness. They are hungering and thirsting for righteousness. Sin appears to them exceedingly sinful. There are those claiming sanctification who made a profession of the truth, like their brethren, and it may be difficult to make a distinction between them, but the difference exists nevertheless. The testimony of those claiming such exalted experience will cause the sweet spirit of Christ to withdraw from a meeting and will leave a chilling influence upon those present. While they, while if they were truly living without sin, their very presence will bring holy angels into the assemble and their words would indeed be like apples of gold in pitchers of silver. And this is taken from Proverbs 25 verses 11. So that concludes our topic, uh, substituting our feelings for a reason. So we know that the true sanctification is a daily work and it will continue as long as we uh, live, right? So tomorrow we're going to go into the testing time. The testing time will be our message for tomorrow. But may I share with you my devotion for today? Let me put this over here so they don't fall away. Uh, so my devotion for today is... It says, in the workshop of God. You know, we are in the workshop of God. And it's taken from 1 Peter 2, 5. It says, He also, as living stone, and built up a spiritual house and a holy priesthood, priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. And that's 1 Peter uh, 2, uh, 5. And it's talking about, man, think about this, this, the, uh, the sanctuary that they had built here, right? That they had built. And if you think about it, uh, remember the, all the stones that they gathered, there was not a hammer or, um, or a chisel that went in that you could hear within the building. Everything has to be, all the material has to be done outside. And when they brought it to the temple, they just placed the the stones or whatever, uh, stones or whatever in place. So there was no noise. So this is where we are. This is where this is coming from. So it says, uh, this building represents God, spiritual temple, which is composed of natural, let me go back. That this building representing God's spiritual temple, which is composed of material gathered out of every nation and town and people of all grades, high and low, rich and poor, learned and unlearned. These are not dead substitutes to be fitted by hammer or chisel. So, and then it goes on to state here, it says, when completed, this temple will be perfect in all its parts. It, its appreciation of angels and of men for its builder and maker is God. And it goes on to say, the care shown in the building of the temple is a lesson for us regarding the care that we are to show in our character building. No cheap material was to be used. No harsh hazard work was to be done in matching the different parts. Pieces must fit pieces perfectly. Just as God's temple was, so much, so much his church be into their character building his people are to bring no worthless timbers nor careless indifference work now we are in the workshop of god what did i say now we are in the workshop of god and in the process is going on in these hours of probation to fit us for the glorious temple let me repeat that now we are in the workshop of God, and in the process 
and the process is going on in these hours of probation to fit us for the glorious temple. We cannot now be indifferent and neglecting and careless and refuse to depart from sin and expect to become pure and holy and fashioned in the character after the similitudes of a palace. Now is the day of preparation. Now is the time when we can have our defects removed. A stone that does not shine is worthless. What did I say? A stone that does not shine is worthless. That which constitutes the value of our churches is not dead, luster, luster, lusterless stones, but living stones, stones that caught the bright beams from the cheap cornerstones, even the sun of righteousness. So that concludes my devotion for today in the workshop of God. So we are in the workshop of God, and we, make, we need to make sure that every thing that is not of God that we need to surrender and allow him to take full control and as he polished us my sister my brother yes it could be painful because if you think about uh, when you are um, you know women in the kitchen when you have uh, you are cooked and then you uh, uh, burn something in the pot and you got to put the work on there and try to get that that um, that dirt or not dirt but you know that food particles out of the pot bottom and you just grinding and grinding so it is that God is doing a so that he sees things that is not of him so what he's doing he's polishing us he's polishing us he's polishing us and remember we have to be spotless we have to be spotless as he continue doing that yes it's going to be pain you're going to feel the pain yeah it hurts it hurts it hurts right but we know that whatever it is that we're going through that God the father has measured it and he knows that whatever trials you go into he has placed it in your hands he has placed it in hand why because he knows that you can pass the test now here's the thing we do not need to be how would you say complaining and mourning and you know you girl do you know what happened and you know boy do you know what happened and all this other stuff why they really can't help you I mean this is something that you have to make sure that you have surrendered whatever it is that God is working with you. Remember, he has measured it. And because he's measuring, he knows you can pass the test. Remember Job? Remember the story of Job? Remember? He still didn't know why, why, what, why he was to be tested. Why he was tested. We know because we have the whole story, right? But at the time, he did not know he was tested. So it's just like us. We know that we have been tested because God said he will, right? You know, like your child, they misbehave, you talk with them, right? And sometimes you do not only have to talk, you have to go to the bottom and, you know, spank them a little bit for them to get it. But the same as same with us, okay? So God the Father, he gives us this, I've said, the bitter cup. So as we drink the bitter cup and we, you know, and the bitter cup is supposed to be cleansing and purifying us. So as he gave us the first cup and the dose doesn't do it, right? We're moaning and we're complaining and we're doing all that stuff. And we come, why me? Why me? Why not you? Why not you? Right? Why not you? So as we're complaining, then he gives you another cup because the first one didn't do the job. And then you're still complaining, right? Then he goes and he gives you another cup until you are refined into his character. So my sister, my brother, so if you want to put a little bit of sweetener in your cup, remember, a little bit of sweetener in your cup, put patient endurance and prayer. Morning, boys. Patient endurance and prayer. Patient endurance and prayer. So you put some pep into your step. Pep, 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 pep. Right? And sometimes we need this pep right now because there's so much stuff going on and people are just glued to the TV and just believe everything that's happening there in my system, my brother. It's fake news. It's fake news. It's not going on in your world right now, right? It's not affecting you right now. So why are you uh um have the tv on because what it's doing to you is causing more uh heartaches more aches and pain more depression so if you want to have uh more uh how do you say that happy feeling or that joy that passes all understanding we need to go back to the word of god we need to go into the word of god and turn the tv on turn the tv on turn the tv off Turn the TV off and go into the Word of God and get your strength from the Word. So we need to continue to study, study like we have never studied before. So that's how you could put a little bit of sweetener in your cup. 
whatever trials or tribulation you are going through, God got your back. I mean, he knows you can pass the test. He knows you can pass the test. Okay? Morning. So my bodyguards just showed up. Okay, so here is the hymn. Lift high the cross. Lift high the cross. The love of Christ proclaim till all the world adore his sacred name. Come Christian, follow where our, our captain trod. Our king, victorious Christ, the son of God. Let me move this. Hold on, let me move this. It says, and it goes on, and it says, Lead on thy way by thy triumphant sign, the horse, the host of God in conquering ranks combine. Lift high the cross, the love of Christ proclaim, till all the world adore his sacred name. All newborn soldiers of the crucified bear on their bro, bro, brow the seal of him who died. Lift high the cross, the love of Christ proclaim, till all the world adore the sacred name. O Lord, once lifted on the glorious tree, as thou hast promised, draw us all to thee. Lift high the cross, the love of Christ proclaim, till all the world adore his sacred name. Here's the last verse. So shall our song of, tri tri of triumph ever be. Praise to the crucified for victory. Praise to the crucified for victory. Lift high the cross, the love of Christ proclaim, till all the world adore his sacred name. Mm, isn't that beautiful? So my sister, my brother, we know that there's a battle going on. There's a spiritual battle for people's soul, for, for individual soul. We know that there's a battle. It's a spiritual battle. So we have to make a, 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 a choice which side we're going to be on. There's two kingdoms. We got God's kingdom and we got Satan's kingdom, right? And we know the end of the story if you read the Bible. So you know who wins at the end. So I hope and pray that you are on the winning team, my sister, my brother. So whatever trials you're going to, whatever tendency you have that you know that is not of God, ask him for the power that you need to let go whatever that is whatever it is my sister my brother because we as individual will have to stand before a holy being and only way we're going to be able to do that is that we that we are holy people meaning that we have uh went to if we had wronged someone we went to them we got it right right then we went to god and we asked him to 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 take it away and to wash us so we we all go to god and we ask him for you know repent we're repenting we're repenting and as we do something or we say something or we know it was not like him we go immediately and confess it and we leave it alone right we leave it alone and so that's when when god the father look at uh, look at us he doesn't see the the sins he sees that we are covered with the blood of jesus because we have asked the lord to forgive us and that's why he threw it at the bottom of the sea so we as individuals don't need to be deep sea divers and go back there and bring whatever it is that we just prayed for we know that whatever we pray for god has answered it and we need to walk in that newness that god has answered our prayer and do not go like i said go back there and bring all that stuff back because with god my sister my brother if god says it you could take it to the bank you could take it to the bank so let us continue to remain faithful until the end let us bow for prayer they kind of gracious and father i thank you for this beautiful day father i thank you for the wind that is blowing that clearing out the air father i thank you for all my neighbors around father we ask you father to continue to bless them i thank you for my friends that stopped by today father we ask you father that you would bless them Father, that you will give them whatever that is needed right now, whatever there's a lack, Father, we ask you that you provide it for them, Father. Father, if I said anything that was not pleasing or acceptable in your sight, Father, I ask you that you forgive me, Father, and I promise to do better the next time. Father, so take me, mold me, shape me into what you want me to be. Is my prayer in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Okay, my sister and brother, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for stopping by. If this was a blessing to you, can you make a... a make a like can you let's like it and then you could make a comment what are you doing today 
what are you doing today? What are you doing today? Well, I'm about to go and start baking. I'm going to be baking some bread and I'm going to be baking some bun. Bun is like, it's a Belizean bun, but it's going to be like, so you could say it's like a sweet bread. It's like a sweet bread. So that's what I'm going to be doing in a little while. Then after you make a comment, what are you doing today? Then you can go ahead and do share, 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 share. Then you can follow me on YouTube on the Burdell Warrior. And then over there, hit the subscribe button there as well. And I'll forever be so grateful, grateful, grateful for you for taking the time out of your busy schedule to stop by today. So my sister, my brother, may I have a hug? May I have a hug? nothing like a hug. I tell you, there's really nothing like a good hug. I know most people can't hug these days, right? So then you can hug yourself. It's, it's very safe. It's very safe to hug yourself. Okay, here we go. Mm, one, two, one more, three. Okay, so until then, my sister Maretta, thank you so much. I love you. I love you. I love you. And I appreciate you very much. Until tomorrow, be blessed and take care. Talk to you guys soon. Take care.